Buenos dias, everyone, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is fabulous. What, what, a, what an amazing, amazing turnout. And so, uh, speak so highly of our great city, San Antonio. My name is Dr. Raul Rudy Reina, and uh, we have a, a great agenda plan for you. And I think if you, if you look at my name up there, I don't have a title next to it or a position. And, and that's primarily because I'm retired, even though. <laughs> Even though I'm not doing a very good job at that, but uh, as I'm sure my wife, Rosa Maria, will tell you, uh, we are very, very excited, though, to be here. And this is a, a, a great opportunity because um, we have so many, many good things going on in our city, uh, especially uh, with respect to education and so many other great initiatives that our mayor is uh, basically leading on behalf. And many of you in all the different areas that you represent are bringing to our city a fabulous opportunity for us to continue to take our city to the next level. It's just a, a wonderful opportunity. I'm glad to be here, and uh, I, I still serve on a few boards. I know, I know, uh, you know, with <laughs> the uh, the Hispanic Chamber, I have the honor of being the chair of their education committee with uh, on the uh, STEMIC board, as well as uh, the San Antonio STEM Council and the American STEM Alliance. So I guess more than anything else, you see a trend there. It has STEM in it, or STEAM, as we're now uh, moving forward. I'm going to definitely have uh, some involvement to try to help our city because it's so important. But I'm very glad that I have the opportunity to do that and flexibility. So as I look across the room, I know many and many of you, and I think uh, basically I've had a chance to work with many of you in our city for different reasons. And I can't think of folks that are more dedicated to our city, more committed to making our city the best that it can be, especially for our kids. You know, our kids are the most precious resource that we have, and everything that I see going on, and I know many of you, like I said, personally, and the commitment that you all have is incredible. So everyone in this room, please give yourselves a round of applause as to VIPs for our city. Also, there are some folks who do some great work as well that I'd like to introduce just very briefly. We'll have a chance to introduce him a little bit later, but uh, I want to, of course, uh, introduce him in a few minutes, but our mayor's here, Mayor Ron Nirenberg. <laughs> Councilman Roberto Trevino, who's here with District 1. And I know there's a couple of your colleagues that are coming in, Councilman, in a few minutes as well. Um, and then we have um, that's the, one of the uh, CEO and president of the Hispanic Chamber, Where's Ramiro Cavazos. I see him somewhere. <laughs> we have, um, I know she'll be joining us in a few minutes, so I may hold it until she gets here, but uh, let me start go, moving down to uh, Dr. Ryan. Uh, Lugalia, hello, and where's, where's, where's Ryan? Thank you, with uh, P60 Plus. And we're working on the National STEM Initiative so that San Antonio can become a designated city and a community of practice for uh, the STEM Learning Ecosystem Initiative. And with us this morning, we're so honored and happy to have with us Dr. Jan Morrison. We have, uh, in many you'll see, many committees that we put together to help us facilitate this whole process. And uh, but representing uh, our universities as well, we have uh, doc, uh, Dr. Christina Evans here, the Vice President. <laughs> Dr. Mark Appleford, he's here with UTSA, representing UTSA on the engineering side. And I'm not sure if I had a chance to see her earlier, but uh, uh, Marty West, who's superintendent of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. There she is, of course, there you are. We have uh, other, uh, I know, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be here, but I don't know if uh, Al Mariola is uh, president of the South, uh, San Antonio Chamber. So let's give a good hand to Al. He's like, And I know George was he was with us uh, and uh, 
very busy and tied up, but uh, I think he'll be joining us as well. George Hamm, who's the CEO of the Workforce Solutions Albums. Give him a big round of applause. Of course, everyone's familiar with SA Work, so let's welcome Jorge Romanita Barrera. Let's say thank you. For So, uh, you know, I'm sure with all the planning, I'm going to miss somebody, so I apologize <laughs> in advance and so forth, but thank you. And of course, uh, I don't want to, uh, he's going to be here in just a second, I'm going to introduce him as well, but the person who's helped us and helped host us here for today, so for sure, Ramiro Salador, the director of San Antonio's Public Library System. <laughs> so, we um, are asking probably, and you're asking, you know, why? a STEM learning ecosystem initiative. And uh, let me uh, move forward just to uh, identify just a couple of items before we have some of our uh, speakers come up and so forth. Uh, you know, we're all doing some great work in really trying to engage our youth, particularly not only in education, but STEM education, because it's so, and STEAM as we're now uh, going to see as we move forward, because it's so important for our kids to be able to solve problems. It's so important for our kids to be able to think critically, to be able to collaborate, to be able to have all the skills, the soft skills that really fall in many ways under the STEAM umbrella that are critical to our children in terms of their, their success, uh, that uh, you know, abilities to communicate, to present, to write, and so forth. They're, they're so important, especially for their careers as they move on uh, to employment. So those are the things that uh, we're really looking to do with the STEM ecosystem is how can we take everything that we're doing from a STEM and STEAM perspective and take it to another level? Because there's so many impressive, uh, incredible initiatives that are already taking place in our city and a lot of you are working together. So how can we take that to another level? That's one thing. The other one is uh, if you look around the room again, there are many STEM and STEAM, in essence, uh, organizations, agencies, institutions that are here today, and they are part of our ecosystem. So I would encourage you, and, and, and Rebe is gonna help us a little bit later, to look around, and if you see others who are not here today, who should be at the table with us as we move forward, to help us identify who they are so that we can continue to grow this initiative. Because it's not just about you know, having been here today, it's about today's a starting point and a kickoff, and then moving forward so that we can take what we're doing to another level by involving as much of our community as we can. Because that's where we get the strength. That's where we get the power as a community to really change and make a difference with everything that we're already doing. So that's another uh, key item, is to be able to bring all of our stakeholders in the STEM and STEAM areas together to really help make a difference, to communicate at a different level. Those are, are very, very important points. Um, and then, exactly what are we going to be doing? And we'll talk more about that. However, we really need community input. We need your input, and we need that of others who are not with us here today. Um, obviously, we have a space problem if we had everybody here, but uh, as it is, this is wonderful. To help us work on our application, we will be submitting an application during the month of February, putting it together, and then to help us cascade a vision. What do we want our STEM and STEAM learning ecosystem to be? That's so critical for us. And then also to be able to develop the design principles for our ecosystem. Those are got like guiding principles, right? What is it that we value in our city for this in our community, for this uh, actual ecosystem to thrive and to move forward? So those are the reasons that uh, we are going to be uh, moving uh, things forward in, in this whole area with the intent that we can develop the workforce, right? The workforce that we need to help our city continue to grow because of all the good things that you all are doing and taking them to another level so that we can take our great city to another level. I think that's something that's key to everything that we're doing, so we're really excited about that. So I think that's, that's the, uh, the main thing I wanted to mention just to get us started. And um, with that, I'd like to first have a, a couple of people that I'd like to introduce that are going to uh, take uh, our, uh, move us forward this morning. First of all, uh, I had an agenda up there. Everyone should have an agenda at your table and um, that uh, shows uh, what we're going to be covering today and so forth. But uh, one of the gentlemen that I had a chance to meet with uh, this past fall and uh, 
was very, very supportive from the point that we started talking about this. And uh, he immediately engaged his staff. And I, and I know that we have uh, uh, Jennifer Velasquez and uh, Regina Villalobos, who's on this staff has been wonderful support. Let's give them a big round of applause for But I want to thank him for his leadership because he immediately embraced this and says, we will, he said, we will become a member and a part of this ecosystem initiative. Please welcome the director of the San Antonio Public Library, Ramiro Salazar. Thank you, Dr. Reina. It was not difficult to, to embrace your, your passion and your commitment when you approached me about um, support for making this initiative a possibility in a, re a reality here in San Antonio. I want to again uh, acknowledge and welcome uh, Mayor Nuremberg and Councilman Trevino. Thank you for being here, for uh, supporting this initiative. I want to thank all of you uh, for your interest in continuing to work with us um, uh, to make this initiative a reality. Uh, Dr. Reina identified our staff, uh, Jennifer Velasquez, who leads our effort in reaching out to our teens throughout the, the library system to engage the, the teens in, um, in, in activities and those resources that the library offers to allow them to make uh, decisions for themselves that will benefit them not only in school and as they continue past school. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for your, your great work. Um, on behalf of the staff, I wanted to extend to all of you a very warm welcome. I'm pleased to see such a large crowd, again, being interested in this uh, wonderful initiative that you'll hear more about as, as, as the meeting continues. Uh, the library takes very seriously and understands the, the value and the power of partnerships and collaboration. So it was easy uh, for us to uh, partner with Dr. Reina um, for this initiative and we look forward to other partnerships as we identify uh, other entities that can assist us in, in making this again this initiative a reality here in San Antonio. So I'm very proud of, uh, of our staff, I'm very proud of the City of San Antonio for our uh, collaborative efforts and thank you all for being here this morning because you demonstrate that co collaborative spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Ramiro, for all your support uh, that we had. Our next speaker, Mayor Nirenberg, as you all know, was elected in uh, June, specifically 10th, 2017. And uh, he has been committed to public service most of his life, including ser uh, serving as program director of the Annenberg Public uh, Policy Center. He was first elected to San Antonio City Council in 2013, and I remember uh, having worked with him all the way back to that point. And uh, the former District 8 Councilman made education a focal point of his public service, and he continues to do that. As a District 8 Councilman, he started Kids Town Hall meetings, which gave youth an opportunity to learn about municipal government and advocate for solutions to challenges in their own community. This led students at Garcia Middle School to successfully advocate for a sidewalk, which is so important, in front of their school and gave other students a voice and a mechanism to interact with their elected officials. As mayor, amongst many other initiatives, he is working to meet with superintendents from all 16 Bear County school districts and is working with city staff to prioritize city services around our public schools. He and his office have been phenomenally supportive of this STEM initiative, and I can't tell you how much one of the staff members, because all of them, Marisa Bono, who's uh, his chief uh, uh, policy person, and of course we, we have Maria Luisa Cesar. Let's give her a big round of applause. She is <laughs> They've been fantastic, and thank you, Mayor, for, for your leadership in that area to help have them uh, join us and help us with what we're doing. And I know many of you have had that same personal experience of working with him directly and seeing the work uh, that you all are doing be supported by our mayor. He'll have some news later about a smart city challenge, wherever Dr. Zinkraft is. So I know that uh, we'll, we'll hear more about that over time. That he's building out uh, with several community partners, and he would uh, integrate the San Antonio Tomorrow Plan with this initiative as well. Personally, I've had uh, the opportunity to interact with our mayor, like I said, way back before he ran for city council. And uh, what I appreciate most about him is, number one, his willingness and ability 
to tackle tough issues, strategic issues for our committee, as well as uh, to make the best informed decisions about what we're facing as a community and all the challenges that we have to deal with. I, it doesn't go unnoticed that I'm sure he has 10 other sessions today, probably tonight and this weekend that he has to attend, but that he made time to be here with us this morning as one, another, yet another opportunity to help take our city to another level. So let's welcome Mayor Ron Nuremberg. didn't have to have my leg pulled or anything to be here. I was really excited to be here. Uh, and I want to thank Maria Cesar from my office for really being the eyes and ears of our STEM initiatives. Um, it is true, I was elected on June 10th. At least one person is counting the actual days. Um, but all of those days in between then and now have been exciting because there's so many great things happening in our community. And I want to thank my uh, colleague, Councilman Trevino, here in District 1. Uh, for being a huge part of that. Um, here's a picture of our city, Jan, and I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, Jan is the executive director of this entire national program. Welcome to San Antonio. This is our city. In three years ago, three and a half years ago, we just opened one of now the premier performing arts theaters in the entire country, Tobin Performing Arts Center. If anyone's been there, you know just the incredible dynamic acoustics, the quality performances, and the history that's in that building. It was opened ceremonially with a performance by Paul McCartney that was fairly high dollar, but uh, welcomed 1,754 music fans of all ages to enjoy music in the center of our city. As you may know, a couple days ago, we had Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson in the Performing Arts Theater. He brought together people of all ages, um, people from all corners of our city, and there were 1,760 people <laughs> in attendance. So that shows you the kind of city we are and the kind of STEM community that we're building. And so I want to thank all of you for the work that you've done to bring us to this point. You may know that my job here and what I campaigned for was to bring all that work together, to articulate a vision for our city that is better than what we, it is today, and can advance us not just in our own local neighborhoods, but across the world. And I'm excited because that's the commitment I made together with you and, and with people like Rudy and with um, Cliff and, and so many others uh, that are in this room on particularly STEM initiatives. This is entirely true uh, for STEM uh, and STEAM initiatives, this point. We can no longer work in silos. And while the work of government and businesses and other sectors increasingly is isolated, the work in the STEM community in San Antonio has not been. We've seen incredibly strong partnerships already and collaboration in our school districts, working with businesses and universities to create STEM and STEAM programs tailored to jobs that we don't even know exist yet. We've seen museums like the Witte and the Museum place a special emphasis on STEM learning. And we're seeing maker spaces pop up all around town, giving residents of all ages a chance to code or to make things with their hands. This is all happening in our city organically. Now imagine when this room, which is 100 strong, becomes a convention center space that's 1,000 strong. That should be our goal. We know that systemic, Folks from Systemic here, raise your hands. Great program. Continues its work connecting an elevated STEM and STEAM education. And we know that Youth Code Jam, where's Debbie? <laughs> now has the single largest coding event in the state. And let us not forget that Debbie and Youth Code Jam and all those students that were involved in making really cool things in a matter of hours got a really good, great shout out from President Obama in 2016 a White House recognition for this little uh, engine that could right here in San Antonio. And I just learned today that Austin is once again stealing one of our ideas. So Debbie, <laughs> Debbie will be hosting Youth Code Jam ATX with a San Antonio flair. And, and a little birdie told me that it might be moving farther south as well. So 
This is all happening right here in our community. So we know the work, and we know that sometimes it's happening collaboratively with great fanfare. But we also know that sometimes has to become always. Part of what we want to do today is create an ecosystem of inter interconnected STEAM and STEM partners who can best share or can share best practices and amplify each of our work and help us create the strongest possible application to become a new member of the international STEM learning ecosystem. We know also that the foundation is all about encouraging our students to use problem solving skills and critical thinking techniques, the path to opportunity for our students and for all of our neighbors lies in their ability to envision the jobs of tomorrow and not just in STEM or STEAM traditional careers. In fact, if you ask anybody who's hiring these days, every job is a STEM job. Every job is a STEAM job. It requires those skills and we can't turn our backs on non-traditional education as well. And so as you look around the room today, I challenge you to consider exactly what Rudy said, which is that who's not here? Not everyone in this room, not everyone who needs to be in this room is here today. Help us recruit those that are missing so that they can help us with funding, members from our chambers of commerce, and I know uh, Romero is always on the front edge of that curve, so thank you Romero for being a visionary in our chamber community. And other elected officials, councilmen, always all, again leading in innovation, in fact we just together formed an innovation committee that he will be a strong part of, uh, and also members within the business community who not only need to hire the students who are being trained and educated in our community, but also need to show the rest of the industry just what it takes to be a leader, but also why San Antonio is churning out the very best workforce that America's future has to offer. Today, we'll ensure that our amazing community partners We'll work together towards nurturing our next generation of leaders, building a pipeline for our future workforce, and reminding our students that they can truly be whatever they want to be. And so, Jan, we were talking a little bit earlier, and you were glowing about San Antonio. I was appreciative of that because it feels like we're just getting started. But the truth of the matter is, San Antonio is the leading indicator of the leading indicator of the leading indicator. And if you need any further encouragement of the work that you're doing today, it's that if we solve these challenges here in San Antonio, the rest of our country is in really good shape. So congratulations and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mayor uh, Nuremberg, first of all, for, for your leadership that you provide our city, as well as uh, for reminding us that uh, STEM education and STEAM, edu uh, STEAM education is for all children, especially at the K-12 level, where we're really focusing on preparing them to be successful no matter what area and what career they decide to undertake. Because if whether they decide to go to work right out of high school or whether they decide to go ahead and pursue a you know, higher education, they will have a really great opportunity if they are able to have a foundation that prepares them to be successful no matter what they undertake. So we really appreciate you. And we're going to hold you to the fact that when we do have our, our future meeting at the convention center with 1,000 plus people, you will be there to help us kick it off. Let's thank them again. Thank you. So, uh, I've been very uh, blessed because last year, early in the year, we started investigating this uh, initiative that was taking place uh, across the country, and I had the opportunity to interact with folks at uh, the, what I call the Backbone Organization that really helps support what takes place with the STEM Learning Ecosystem Initiative. And uh, I was able to uh, talk to uh, Dr. Morrison, Jan, and her staff, and they were always so very inclusive so very supportive, responsive, and I've always been very glad and we had a chance to meet at several conferences since then during 2017. And uh, so today we're very, very fortunate to have the person who helps really lead this initiative at the national level. Someone who has an you know, incredible vision for what we're trying to do, who works with the Grand Thunders Network, which you'll, I'm sure, mention. And, uh, 
who um, basically has been a teacher herself for 35 years in the STEM fields. Uh, 15 years ago, she founded the Teaching Institute for Excellence in STEM, TIES, T-I-E-S, and then uh, she's worked with philanthropy, philanthropy, corporations, community schools, and STEM-rich organizations to design for world-class STEM education for all children, again, for all children and learners. And one of the, uh, those is that uh, basically map from workforce to economic development. She's a designer and supporter of STEM Funders Network, which she was, uh, she'll mention, and uh, the STEM Learning Ecosystem National Community of Practice. And uh, I think we were just talking earlier, she's covered 20,000 miles in the last uh, you know, few weeks, and, uh, which is incredible. So thank you, Jan, for being with us. Let's welcome Dr. Jan Morrison. Ten years ago, I um, was here in San Antonio talking with many of you and others who have now actually been successful in retirement and um, about what it meant to bring STEM to San Antonio when the T-STEM initiative was being formed by the Communities Foundation of Texas and the Governor's Office and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So um, when I look around this room, I just have to smile. Mayor, that's why. Because there were three or four of us in this room at that time. And so what you've done in a decade has been remarkable. So thank you very much. And Ruth, that it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to work with you and your folks. And I know that this is just the beginning. Let me also be very clear about who I understand is in this room, because who is in this room matters. It matters when you're talking about an ecosystem. So welcome to the universities, to schools, to STEM learners, STEM um, leaders, coordinators, business industry, employers, faith-based community, the chamber, P16, workforce folks, designers, artists, STEMists, and those who, who wish they were steps, like the rest of us. Because it is the business to be in right now. When Amazon comes up with a STEM um, toy section, you know you've made it. <laughs> so I do have a PowerPoint this morning, and the reason to bring a PowerPoint is not that we're going to um, do STEM 101 or Ecosystems 101, but it's to leave behind some record for you to use as you do the application for the national system. So I want to go over what the ecosystems are, what we're trying to accomplish, uh, where they're located, how do we scale, and just the preliminary results. We've been in this for three years, and I want to give you some, some guidelines on that and what it is. All right, STEM learning ecosystems. I come into the world in science. I taught science. I lived it. My father was Doogie Hauser. He was a physician by 18. My mother was on the Manhattan Project. So did I have any choice? Of course not. Of course not, the eldest in the family. But that was OK. Um, at that time, it was science, technology, engineering, and math with the period after each one. When a decade ago, this country figured out that if we didn't help our children to understand how to solve the grandest of problems that we were facing, and that these had nothing to do with the academic world, but had to do with the way that nature presented it, the periods after each of those letters disappeared. That is not by mistake, that is by design. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. It is implied that, and has always been, that it is driven by design. The design thinking, the design process, is the basis of all solving of all problems from Da Vinci, before Da Vinci, after Da Vinci. I used to have a pyramid up here. If, if we didn't think that that was design focused, then how did they get that, right? I know the aliens, but even the aliens did that, right? Even the aliens had stuff. 
The fact is, whether you put the A in there and you say the arts, you make it steam, it's always been there. So I would suggest to San Antonio is that you hold hands, take a deep breath, and agree that whether the A shows up or not, the A is there. <laughs> Number one decision today. The second thing is that in, in a learning, the learning part of this, it includes in and out of school. It doesn't matter if a student is found in the, in the confines of a building we call school, or found in a museum, or found in a 4-H program. Wherever a child or a, a person is found, they are learning STEM. And after a National Academy report called STEM Learning is Everywhere, um, we found that STEM learning is everywhere, 24-7. So we ought to be talking about a learning ecosystem, not just an ecosystem, but the emphasis on the fact that there is a driver in this. There is a result that's needed. And third, ecosystem. Man, we have gone through every kind of collaborative term possible in this country for STEM. When I first arrived here in Texas, we were talking about the statewide STEM networks. But a network lights up because of information that travels from one part to another doesn't imply that you make relationships. And collaboration for us as human beings is a tough go. Enlightened self-interest is what drives us. If we get something, we stay around. If we don't get something, we don't stay around. So it seemed to us that ecosystem was a better term. Why? Because if you go back to our roots of science and you look at Odom, who formed the word, an ecosystem is the travel of energy in the collaboration and formation of interdependence and relationships. And isn't that what this room is? Aren't, you, we couldn't even get you quiet this morning. <laughs> the amount of energy, the amount of learning, the amount of relationships indicates the ecosystem, and hence the launch of the STEM learning ecosystem. What are the key five features of a thriving STEM learning ecosystem? It's very interesting. In doing the research about what worked in this country, across the country, we found that there were things that did work really well and that we could learn from. And what we found was, first and foremost, you have to have cross-cutting sector partnerships. Everybody has to be in this room, and that's the point that you made. Who's not here counts, and they have to be invited. They have to find a seat and their voice and that hub that ecosystem hub that they have to have. You establish an architectural and organizational features for sustainability. Very important. The STEM learning ecosystems is not a STEM program. It's, it makes that which the work that goes on better because it is the opportunity to provide for connective tissue and for enabling, enabling your work to do its job to a better degree. In that, you're going to find gaps, you're going to find challenges, and you'll plug them and you'll go ahead and you'll learn and you'll continue. But the ecosystem is not going to provide programming. It is an alignment in and out of school to workforce, to workforce that is connected, inextricably connected to economic development. So I'm going to stop here for a moment. I cannot emphasize this enough. We're all here, we care about our kids, we don't want to lose this generation that's in school and out of school that are here right now, got it. But we have to also plan for the future. So as you're thinking about ecosystems, you solve the immediate, where your feet, where you lie right now, what counts, those babies that are in front of you. But you also have got to consider what's those who are coming. And so a future vision is absolutely critical in the formation of your ecosystem. And I think, when I looked back, I think we need to push that to a greater degree here. You have an idea of what economic development is, you've got to push that. We don't know the jobs that are coming down that pike decades from now, but good, critical thinkers, smart designers in your city, those youngsters and those future youngsters will be able to handle it to ensure all educators are equipped and trained and benefit and, and have impact. Educators, that means it's at least teachers. 
but it is not only teachers. We have an entire after-school environment of educators. We have educators who are family members. Every family member, every parent <coughs> group in, your, in, your, in San Antonio are educators. Those are all folks who need to understand how, to, how best to do this. And finally, to create articulated college and career readiness pathways. And the way we look at the pathway is it's not the yellow brick road to some 30-year profession. It is indeed going to be an interstate. Paths on, paths off, paths on, stackable credentials, real labor market value. Big thing, they have to provide enough funds so a family, so your children can raise their families, and so that they can take a vacation, so their life has quality. STEM, and we don't talk about this enough, but the ecosystem does. STEM has to be a quality of life issue so that it brings to your most impoverished hope and a real future for what they see is how they want to live their lives. And I can't emphasize that enough. How do we hope to accomplish this? Conditions have to be achieved over a period of time, focusing on access and opportunity. Diversity is not the issue. Access is the issue. Equity, being equitable so that it's not separate, but that it's together. Participating STEM learning ecosystems, some of the demographic information, we have over 600,000 PK-12 teachers and informal educators right now in the community of practice. 1,300 school districts, 19 million students and counting. Um, there are 14,000 school districts in our country, and we aren't even close. And the, that's why when the mayor talked about um, San Antonio entering because you are a slice of life, it is critical that you not only get this right for yourselves and for your children, but that you get this right for the nation. And the people who have, who the co-chairs and the funders of the National Community of Practice, they get this. And that's why I'm here, because we believe this. We, we are talking about cultivation. Cultivation is different than squeezing, pressing, compelling, and guilting. It means that everybody comes to the table because there is that enlightened self-interest that is going to feel, help to grow and develop and then scale it. So we know that, that there's skeptics and there are people in the STEM, outside the STEM community who are still not going to get on board. Proof is in not the talk. It's in the, in the work, and that's the, the important piece here. So deep technical assistance comes with the National Community of Practice, curated conversations, in-person convenings. Year one, there's, as you can see, there's a, a, whole load, a whole section of support systems in year two, year three, but I want to focus on the word and beyond. There is never a time in the National in the STEM Learning Ecosystem Project and the National Community of Practice that, that there isn't support. It just isn't a drop off. Now, how do we do this? It isn't because there's a flow of money. It is because the theory of action is a flow of services. Technical assistance is a big deal. Actually designing that connective tissue here is going to take work. We're all going to have to roll up our sleeves. We're going to send people to, to work with you on this. And those thousand people, if there are a thousand, then they need to be here. Because everybody needs to understand what the role of design is in creating what's going to work for you all. Individually, it's all going like guns. What works for the, for the city itself is that you are together and that you do your work and you make decisions by doing it together. So this is a really important piece. And so this is not a three-year commitment. It is a long-term commitment. So here's the location map. So you can take a look at the 56. We have three cohorts. Cohort four will open up um, in late winter, early spring, and an invitation for you to apply. And you have the formal invitation. So that is a given. So that is one of the reasons I'm here, and an invitation for us to help you in order to make sure that is spot on. Um, we scale the work, 
And once you're in it, be, um, through these community of practice meetings in which your attendance will be paid for, from, for, the future, for now and the future, and you will, what you like, what's working, you will then do as pre presentations to other ecosystems. You'll join um, issue-centered um, questions and practices because you have a problem that you want to solve. Um, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Tulsa, Oklahoma decided, as you did, they had lots of assets, and about five years ago got their act together before the ecosystem project and pulled together all the design work and got and created their ecosystem, joined the ecosystem <coughs> project, and they have somebody who's head of it, ex Ann Black, engineer, stupendous. She is full-time at this work for Tulsa, but she's full-time at it for the ecosystem. There isn't a day she doesn't talk to another ecosystem. Somebody calls her and says, ex Ann, I've been wrestling with this problem. What's Tulsa doing? Or can you come tomorrow? We'll pay your way. We need you to be here at this at this this particular meeting with with our legislators who are cons concerned with a decision. And she's all over the place. And the head of Orange County um, STEM in California, all over the place. The head of Syracuse, all over. What it started to has started to happen is exactly what we said. The idea that everybody works together, they lean on each other, and they create a real ecosystem. So let's see if I can get this. I don't. This is not hooked up to to music to sound, is it? Yes. It is hooked to sound. Okay. Let's see if we can actually get this to come on. I thought I'd show you what one of these things looks like. Is it gonna go? Leave it with you. So you scale the work because we eliminate the random acts of STEM. And we create STEM learning ecosystems. That's really important, that com comment. So the other thing that you're entitled to is that um, we, we found that leadership of an ecosystem isn't because you care, you care enough or that you've been prepared in other ways. So the leaders of the ecosystems now have an opportunity to come together in a leadership institute called Lead STEM. We have 22, it's the first year of it, and after you're admitted to the national, then your leadership will be able to apply for this. And it's a year long, um, it's just how do you lead a STEM, STEM learning ecosystem? And how, how does leadership in San Antonio differ from leadership elsewhere? So that's important. So let me give you some preliminary results after three years. So why do this? What's so important? What, what have we found? First of all, we have found that um, there's a significantly, statistically significant improvement in cross-sector collaborations. Not surprising, but that's really critical in terms of aligning in school and out of school, and also with common learning outcomes in STEM so that the standards that are being held to the schools, the, the schools held um, their feet to the fire on that, are also being shared by the out-of-school areas. 29% of all the ecosystems show growth in at least one indicator category that they have picked. 89% of all of them show in two categories. This is after three years, and some of them it's only after one year because they're in cohort three. 60% have demonstrated growth in, in three of the indicators. So what does that mean? That means that what they the way that they have designed their ecosystems and the success, levels of success that they have determined for themselves, they are meeting. And so in the design work to become an ecosystem, you will determine that. And it's our expectation that is within three years, you're going to start to have indicators that actually indicate that you're moving ahead, you're advancing. And it's very, very important for you to know that we understand that this is not a reclamation project. There are cities that are, <coughs> absolutely, my own, my own was, and still is working on it. Um, this is to advance what's already moving and shaking. And what we see is that that's not that expectation is not unreasonable. 
So why? Because you're mature in so many ways. Because you have multiple STEM schools and academies. You have a thriving STEM economic development forecast. You're, you have robust STEM out-of-school opportunities, unbelievable. You are driven by local government. You have gaps and challenges that are becoming clearer. And what's clear is I left a lot of room on the bottom to keep listing that, right? So that we know why this and why now. But it isn't for me to determine. That is for you to determine. And that's important. But I, I want to also, and I, I know my time is, I'm past a little bit of the time, but I just want to leave with a couple of, of important pieces. When STEM came into the world a decade ago, the name was, as I said, went, lost the periods after each one. It was also a very narrow banded understanding of what STEM was, and it was highly academic, pro, academically prized by the National Science Foundation. It is now STEM is design thinking and design literacy. It's computational thinking, computational literacy. It is driven by the arts. It is driven by big data, by the Internet of Things, by uh, economic development, connection to workforce, and it is driven by the creation of stories. If you do not create stories, you are not, a, you are not doing STEM. Because it is those stories that we tell about our children, about the inventions, about innovation, that are what make the actual fabric of the city and of the, the, what you can call success. Those, as I said before, have to be future facing and it has to be clear because this is hard work. And when you decide, and it seems like you've decided, you're here on a you know, very early morning at the end of a week, that you've decided that it, you have to be relentless and sustaining. It takes a commitment, but it takes us creating the story. So my expectation is, I'm leaving this behind, use it, call us, we're happy to help, that this time next year we're celebrating all the, the new successes. You are invited in the spring to US News and World Report to the Community of Practice meeting. Please come. Please join us in California as a new STEM learning ecosystem next fall. We're going to be in California. Please join us then. And please invite us to help make this begin, this beginning, and the fact that you're holding hands and walking over that line together to be robust, strong, and the best thing that ever happened to these kids in this town. Thanks. Thank you, Jan, and especially for the great leadership that you and your organization are providing on behalf of this initiative, as well as uh, we can see that uh, our youth with uh, initiatives like this are in good hands as we move forward and, and think of the future. One of the things I'd uh, like to do is go back, I don't know if, uh, if we could go back to, uh, uh, you know, to the previous. Uh, so, uh, when we started this initiative, uh, to start planning and thinking about it, not knowing uh, what we were completely going to be uh, getting uh, involved with across the community, we put together a uh, small uh, committee to help us think through the process and what we were going to be doing. And I'd like to ask those folks who were involved, our steering committee, which included uh, Dr. Uh, Cliff Zinkraff, uh, Rebe Schaefer, David Monroe, founder of new, the New Science and Technology Museum uh, uh, here with us today, Ramiro Cavazos, Sophie Torres, Bill Neely representing uh, Code Jam, Chris Cook, um, Joe Sanchez, Adam Cavazos, and Patrick Felty. Could you all please stand and let's give them a big round of applause. Really helped us get the ball rolling and in their own stead, our leaders in our community have done a, a wonderful job in those areas. Now, as we move forward, I'm gonna skip the slide and go because we started looking at uh, also putting together committees that would allow us to really, in essence, bring and provide input via committees 
to the initiative that we were going to be involved with the application, the vision, the design principles that I mentioned before. And so there you see a lot of the uh, usual suspects in terms of categorical areas and uh, with students uh, and even teachers could be in the middle of course. Uh, and again, we're talking about P20, all the different groups that uh, at this point in time we're looking to help us make this happen in terms of the application process. And then moving forward after we get that designation, as Jen mentioned, uh, and uh, so again, we understand that we have to apply as a city, we have to be accepted into this uh, uh, initiative as well. So this was a mechanism that will help us move in that direction. To that end, you know, pardon the detail, but let me go through this real quickly. We've set up committees, as you saw in the previous one, and let me just tell you who the leaders are and ask them to. If they're not standing, to please raise your hands and stand. Um, for the informal learning group, that includes museums, that includes uh, the libraries, uh, um, I think the inventors group here in San Antonio. We have Jennifer Velasquez, where she's in the back, who will be leading that group. So everyone uh, at the end of the meeting, you'll know who's heading up that group. We know we will have a media group, and it has to be determined uh, who's heading that up. I want to thank the executive vice president of our Northside Chamber, who's going to be heading, can you stand please, uh, Christina Alderete, who's going to be heading up the, uh, and maybe we can all applaud for them, but the, uh, the chamber group. We have, uh, on the business side, been very fortunate. We have four folks who are helping us uh, initially lead this. Uh, Monica Simpson, who uh, uh, is uh, basically uh, you know, helping us with, with her company as well. Uh, Tyler Schrader, Ken Kingery, and Civil Penny. Can you all all stand and so forth? Uh, Booz Allen Hamilton. We have uh, basically uh, Boeing, and, and I, I don't think uh, Ken was able to make it. I know he wasn't uh, doing well. And EQ, Isabel Pena. So they'll be helping us address the corporate business side. We have uh, Jake Lopez, who's helping us with, uh, with the, I, I think, I don't know if he's still here. Jake, please stand, stay standing. He's helping us with the professional organizations like, say, STEMIC. Uh, a lot of organizations that we have in our city who make this work. Um, on the government side, of course, you, you know Maria Risa, uh, Cesar, and Marisa Bono have been very helpful here. Thank you for helping them, uh, for helping us by making them uh, available to us to help with this initiative. On the STEAM side, in a second, you'll get to hear from Nadia, of course, Nadia Boteo, she's here somewhere. I think there you go, Nadia, you'll get to hear a little bit about STEAM. We're looking, still working with parents. Um, on the uh, college, uh, uh, Alamo Community College, Dr. Jody Duncan, Jody, could you please stand? And so forth, so everybody can see. And, and then at the university level, we have uh, four universities. We'll, we'll intend just to have all of them, but uh, where's uh, Dr. George Williams? Can you please stand? He's going to be heading us up uh, from our of the lake. And um, we have, of course, K-12 is a huge, huge uh, initiative for our city, like anywhere else. And um, for the teacher side, Rebecca Schaefer is going to be helping because of the fact that uh, she uh, works with K-12 extensively with our public school system for Region 20. Dr. Eddie Rodriguez, where, where's uh, Dr. Rodriguez who heads up? He's going to help with our administrators. He heads up the uh, Stan Murray College High School in Harlandale. Uh, Deborah Rice, uh, bless her heart, wasn't able to be with us because she uh, was feeling ill today. But uh, she's going to be hitting up the STEM coordinators. And then the out of school time group, which uh, is now a part of P16 Plus officially, as I heard. Where's Leah Rosenauer? Could you please stand? Because she's going to help us lead the out of school. And that's a critical, critical group for us as we move forward because we know how important that is for our city. And then uh, we have a group right now, Workforce Solutions Alamo, the Economic Development Foundation, SA Works. And I know uh, the CEO, I believe, of uh, Workforce Solutions Alamo, George Champ, let's uh, welcome him as well. He's going to be uh, working with us on this. So, this kind of gives you an idea. I have met, we will have students represented. I've already met with uh, the, the, the students we met with groups, uh, thanks to Jennifer Velasquez and John Jay, who are basically the STEM school here in San Antonio. And so we'll be working with groups like that to help us bring together student representatives. So uh, as someone said, you know, I, I said herding cats, it's actually like herding uh, bears and you know, lions. But, uh, <laughs> really, really a big uh, initiative, but we're really looking forward to it because um, I'm very proud of our community, very proud of San Antonio when you look across the board here, just in our own city, you know, what uh, we've been able to do just this morning with everyone that's here, and as we move forward, uh, we have a very, very unique 
community. And I know uh, where's uh, Cliff, we've always talked about the uniqueness of San Antonio and you know what this means to us and how that's going to help us do what we're trying to get to. So this is uh, kind of an overview of the entire, uh, uh, you know, at this point, uh, kind of a schematic of what we're looking to do. So as we uh, move forward with our, uh, this morning, just real very quickly, um, you know, I could talk about STEM and STEAM, but I know my limits. So I want to make sure that we have folks who really understand what we're dealing with. And uh, because uh, I know you are the choir. Many of you in here are definitely the experts uh, in dealing with our kids and so forth and uh, dealing with, uh, you know, these issues that we have and these opportunities and challenges. And so I've asked one of the persons who I have the highest regard in terms of what she does for our community in STEM education, because I think K-12 is such an integral and important part of what we're doing on to prepare our kids. And so um, she's amazing because uh, Rebe Schaefer, who is a coordinator at uh, Region 20 Education Service Center, if you uh, are involved with STEM education, somehow you're going to see Rebe uh, somewhere involved with everything related to that. And, uh, and most importantly, bless her heart, you know, no matter when I call, and I'm sure you see the same things. She always says yes, bless her heart. No matter what she has on her plate, and I know her plate had to be, you know, bigger than I don't know what this week. So let's welcome Rene Schaefer, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about STEM education. the sweet, real sweet introduction, but um, so Jan really hit some of the key points that I want to share with you, and it makes me laugh thinking 10 years ago when we were figuring out what STEM was in Texas, um, it began as T-STEM, Texas STEM, and that whole inception at the Communities Foundation of Texas was a design. How do you build STEM in a school? So knowing that in Texas we had traditional schools, how do you create STEM for real in a school? So a lot of the work that Jan did, and so years and years ago, as they were designing the rubric that we now use statewide, we were figuring out as professional developers how you build the professional development to support that infrastructure. So the beauty of the last 10 years is that we now have in Texas a model for STEM. How you go about building a culture, an infrastructure, some things to think about reflecting on your school and your system to know where you are in your development with the goal always of becoming a role model campus. And there are some of those campus representatives in this room today. <coughs> So we have been learning together for the last 10 years. It's very exciting and really, really hard work. So over the last 10 years, some of the things that we've learned is that along the blueprint, a couple of the most difficult places to do the work is building a STEM culture that is strong, building strategic alliances that are strong, understanding what your mission should be on a campus, and how you drive to that mission every single day. Those are some of the key parts of that T-STEM design blueprint that are difficult to do. So 10 years ago, we would never have been sitting in the room together in this way. Business, higher ed, K-12, all sitting together in this room. Um, but today in San Antonio, the landscape looks much different. So 10 years ago, it was a very formal blueprint, figuring out what it means, what you do, how you do it, um, on several key points. The other thing uh, was that that was a really formal way of approaching STEM, a formal way of making STEM happen on a campus. And at the time, as Jan said, it was science, period, technology, period, engineering, period, math, period. What we know now, it's evolved tremendously. The, the real work of STEM now is real world problem solving. How do we bring the problems that are actually happening today in San Antonio to students so they can wrestle with it and find multiple solutions that are viable? They are the problem solvers of the future. So STEM today in San Antonio is a result of all of this collaboration. The fact that we can sit around a table together, move forward together, support kids together, that's the real goal. So 10 years ago when it was formal, we didn't know what we were doing. We know a little bit more about what we're doing, and as Jan said, there are really cool collaborative things happening in pockets all around the city. So imagine if the pockets came together, how we move forward together, what's new, what's innovative. So STEM today is a reflection of all of that investment from 10 years ago being built and evolving over time. It's a very exciting place to be. 
There you go. All right, so I know Nadia's gonna talk a little bit about STEAM. One of the points I wanted to bring um, to this conversation is that when we talk about STEAM, um, 10 years ago it was STEM because that's where the funding was. That's where the state of Texas built a rubric around. That's why it was called STEM at the time. It is still called STEM, but it has multiple iterations of STEM. There is STREAM, so for our Archdiocese folks in the room, um, we've supported the conversation around religion and STEM. Um, STEAM, there are S-T-E-E-M, there are lots of different iterations of STEM, but what we really want to have happening are students communicating effectively, collaborating effectively, and problem solving effectively with real world viable solutions. So that is the goal of STEM every day in San Antonio. So I think Nadia's going to talk to us a little bit more about her perspective on STEM from the arts uh, vision. So, Dr. Raina? And uh, before we go uh, follow the agenda, we do have uh, one thing. We're going to have to uh, switch a, a quick item just because of schedules and so forth. But uh, let me mention that when I, um, uh, we will have our, our STEAM in just a minute uh, conversation. When I was uh, looking at last year's cohort that became a part of this uh, ecosystem initiative, notice that, for the, uh, that initiative became international when they added uh, British Columbia last year. So congratulations, Jen, to your organization and to the, everything that's taking place for broadening, I think, because that's a wonderful, wonderful <coughs> extension that was made. And uh, so uh, when we heard about that, we decided, well, you know, we have a neighbor that's right near us, too, that it would be great if we could understand more about uh, you know each other in these areas and work more collaboratively. So I had a, we had an opportunity to talk to uh, the Consul General here in San Antonio of, of basically from Mexico to San Antonio and um, Reina uh, Torres uh, Mendevil and, and she embraced this concept and was very, very supportive. So I'd like to just uh, have her come up because she, our ambassador you know, for, uh, to uh, San Antonio from Mexico uh, basically comes to us with extensive experience you know, with the Department of uh, Mexican Foreign Relations. She is a former director of the uh, General Protection of Mexican Citizens Outside of Mexico. Uh, she has held posts in the Department of Foreign Relations to include uh, General Coordinator of Department of State and Human Rights. And uh, she graduated in international relations from the Uni Universidad Autónoma de México, UNAM. She obtained a master's degree in the, uh, from the London School of Economics and Political Science. And most importantly, uh, she has been very supportive of seeing how we could connect what we were doing with our neighbor, Mexico. So let's please welcome our ambassador, Reina Torres Mendevil, who's right in front of me. So much. I am delighted to be here this morning um, because this particular initiative is very close to my heart. We've been talking a lot about education, how education, education can change our future, but this is a whole different game. And uh, I, I, I'm going to give out my age, but this is something absolutely new to me. Uh, this is something that wasn't out there when I was studying. Uh, but the, the thing is that our future depends on this kind of initiatives and the way we will conduct um, our two countries, the way our two countries are going to solve our problems in the future has to do precisely with these kind of initiatives. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you to our host, Mr. Salazar, uh, Council Member Trevino, and the city of San Antonio have been amazing for taking the leadership in this issue. And of course, Mr. Reina, you are an incredible partner. And thank you so much for engaging the consulate in this, in this project. Um, I, I, I'd like to say that the problems that will affect our countries in the future doesn't have a border. They don't, they don't have a border. That set of problems doesn't have a border. Um, we can draw the line whatever you want, but at the end of the day, you know, um, the, the issues that the kids uh, that are now in the school systems are going to be solving in the future are going to be common, are going to be shared. So the thing that we take the first step now and engage our communities to make possible a very competitive, um, uh, eco-friendly, um, you know, sustainable future for our two countries is the wise thing to do. So um, 
For us, it was very important to find a partner in Mexico that can, we can bring to the table to be part of this application that San Antonio is kicking off uh, uh, today. And uh, it wasn't very difficult for us to think how important it would be not to go to the traditional you know, institutions like an academic institution or governmental institution, but to the civil society. I think that is very important because for our culture and our communities, this is something completely new. And we were talking yesterday with um, uh, Graciela about, about this precisely, how the moms that take the kids to school don't have any idea about this. They still think that they will be doing good for the kids to take them to karate or ballet uh, after school. Well, they will, should be taking, you know, for summer classes on robotics, uh, the, the kids. So, it is important for us that this in Mexico has a, a, a tie and a root in civil society. So that's why I think it's very important that we have engaged this organization. Graciela is going to talk later on a little bit about this. And once again, uh, this project is very important for Mexico. We are very happy to be part of this and we have to thank Mr. Reina for, for, for this. And uh, we're partners, we're neighbors, and we will be solving these problems together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council General, especially for all your leadership, because we wouldn't have been able to uh, really get to the point that we are in terms of having uh, Mexico consider applying as well as an international partner without the leadership, without the help of your staff. I know Efren, Diana, and of course, Yulia, who's here with us, has done a, a tremendous job. And I want to thank you all. And let's give them a round of applause for all the support that you all have given us to bring together the next opportunity for an international uh, member. So, give them a big round of applause. We're going to go back to you know where we were in our agenda as well because we want to make sure. I know she has an appointment in a few minutes, so we wanted to make sure that we had uh, a chance to have you uh, introduce you know, the, the the next person that we're going to speak to in a few minutes. So when we were looking at um, and uh, with our small committee, uh, you know what to uh, call ourselves in terms of STEM versus STEAM and so forth. Uh, it wasn't clear, especially to me, because I'm not uh, very well versed in the field of STEAM and, uh, so, and what that really entails, until um, uh, our, one of our uh, city folks introduced us to uh, a person here in our city who is from San Antonio, someone uh, who is a ninth generation Tejana. She's born and raised in San Antonio, and uh, she's an, an artist, a composer, an engineer, an educator. She works and teaches at the intersection of art, music, science, and technology. And when I got to meet her, I was very, very taken by, by her background. Someone so young and yet so accomplished. Um, you know, currently an artist in residence here in San Antonio, and she's developing a new body of work based on the San Antonio River, um, and preparing to premiere, this is a world premiere, a sound installation commissioned and presented by music um, and of the, at the anthology MATA, which is an organization, the world's most sought after performance opportunity for young and emerging composers, and uh, as well as the composer Philip Gates. Listen to this. I'm trying to figure it out. But a swimming pool engineered, she developed the technology, into a live organic instrument that's both experienced and performed by the audience as they move within the pool. Okay, now I have to read that several times. <laughs> so uh, it tells you just how amazing, and I've had a chance to look more into her area. Please welcome Nadia Oteo. Especially, I actually wrote the mayor's office about and asking if there were any STEAM initiatives in the city and she got back to me and connected me to Dr. Reina and thus the ecosystem. So that is sort of a really good example of how the ecosystem is already working. Um, 
I'd like to make a few comments about STEAM as we begin this process. As a framework, STEAM helps promote a deeper understanding and transfer of knowledge across subjects. It seeks to create functionally literate people by increasing depth and broadness of proficiency. Shifting to a STEAM perspective means understanding learning contextually. The inclusion of the arts as an equitable partner engenders creativity, innovation, critical thinking, problem solving, communication, collaboration, flexibility, and social and cross-cultural skills. These are all highly coveted qualities by H most HR departments, and some of these overlap with skills already fostered by a traditional STEM foundation. STEAM also helps prepare students to be lifelong learners in pursuit of higher education, skilled trade, innovative career paths, and well-balanced lives. It is a career and life readiness way of educating and learning that is adaptable to the rapidly changing world we live in. STEAM advocates for informed and involved citizens and preserves the human element. STEAM is also benchmarked, measurable, inclusive, and easily adapts to and reinforces education standards in unique and engaging ways. It develops curricula that is representative of the surrounding culture and is aware and tolerant of diversity and different perspectives. Like STEM education, it is supported by constructivism, project-based learning, and a variety of other learning theories, and allows for self-directed process and inquiry-based learning. Decade-long research by early STEAM developer Georgette Yachman shows significant improvements in student engagement and retention and stronger interest from families, communities, and businesses when utilizing a STEAM-based approach. STEM organizes the materials, principles, and processes of what and how things can be done. STEAM includes the why and by whom things are done. The, the veracity of STEAM can be witnessed in the excellent programming already happening here in San Antonio. I've had the incredible opportunity over the last month to engage and meet with our local STEAM, arts-based educators. We have Smart SA supporting multiple arts resources together and their I Love My Brain campaign. Smart working in collaboration with the UT Health Science Center and PhD candidates in neuroscience empowers students by teaching them about how their brains function and with emphasis on taking ownership of their brains. Smart connects the study of the five senses to neuroscience and develops art curriculum around the optical illusion art movement. Students create art pieces and conduct science experiments based on what the children have learned about their sensory abilities. They believe that art is neuroscience and that neuroscience is art. Say C in their Hive Studio, home for innovation and video ecology. Students tell stories native to the digital realm and make things at the intersections of art and technology. The Hive challenges youth to think about interactivity, to analyze art and new media, and to understand how to assemble systems in order to say something with them. So we have spare parts in the mini art museum. Intersecting science, art, and sustainability, they inspire us to change the way we interact with and consume the things around us. They believe that trash is the failure of the imagination. They have diverted tons from the landfill through their reuse programming and initiatives. They support cultural and environmental sustainability, provide affordability and accessibility to the arts, offer community education, and foster creativity green style. We have Urban 15, guided by their mantra of art through available technology, has over 40 years of programming. A brief sampling would be their work with children in Texas border migrant camps during the 70s, where they introduced Apple IIs and early sound electronic devices with grants from the US Department of Education and Labor. And since 1986, have been developing laser and video projection presentations for elementary students, exposing over 65,000 children to technology through the arts along the way. We have the Southwest School of Arts, their Kids Initiating Design Solutions program introduces elementary students to architecture, art, and design in a curriculum of presentations, field trips, and design projects at no cost to participating schools. A partnership with schools, design professionals, teaching artists, and university students, they emphasize creative problem solving. 
learning about historical, social, cultural, and environmental influences on the built environment, and becoming aware of how art and design can change their communities. We have Dr. Kalanick Craig, her Math Through Mariachi program, a collaborative, culturally responsive approach to teaching fractions in a bilingual mathematics classroom, and her work teaching geometry through traditional Mexican tile work. These, neuroscience and art, create creative coding, sustainability, available technology, architecture and design, the math of music. It's a very small representative of our, of our original rigorous community developed STEAM programming already happening here. San Antonio's crown jewels are our arts and culture. It's a significant factor in why our people stay here, why people fall in love and visit time and again, and some never leave. Together with the strength of our STEM community, we have the incredible opportunity to develop a truly innovative STEM STEAM ecosystem, one that's for San Antonio and by San Antonio. We can lead the nation in collaboratively spearheading, shaping, and improving upon the STEM STEAM conversation for the betterment of our youth and our city's future. If we really wish to be a world-class city, able to foster, retain, and attract the best talent across industries, we need to embrace, include, and concretely support both the arts-based and STEM education. If you have any doubts as to how STEAM might apply to you or your industry or how it might be of benefit to our community, I'd like to invite you to join us at the STEAM table so we can connect the ways that the arts are relevant and necessary. Please come speak with us. Please collaborate with us. Whether it's STEAM or STEM, if San Antonio is to truly become an effective learning ecosystem, we need to embrace our similarities, understand and leverage our differences, and do what truly makes our city unique by being the leading example of our nation and the best place to prepare our youth for their future and for the workforce of tomorrow. We hope this is the beginning of a much longer and larger conversation. Thank you. Isn't she great? <laughs> this is wonderful. Thank you, Dahlia, for uh, leading and providing the leadership for our STEAM components and so forth, because they are very critical. And they're, while they do intersect with many of the things that we're doing in STEM education, they're also very, very important because we talk about uh, the soft skills sometimes, which are really the critical skills, right? Again, Cliff, the things that we talk about related to our uh, employers and so forth, which are very, very important. So we really, really are glad that we have a strong strong STEAM component, you know, with our initiative that we're going to move forward. So, our ambassador mentioned earlier uh, that uh, we, uh, they were helping us uh, really see what we could do to find uh, an organization in Mexico that might be interested in applying as well. It would be a separate application. They are in a separate category because they're international, but it would also be an opportunity to be a collaborative application with our application because we would be able to work together to learn more about each other and as I tell folks sometimes uh, I don't know how many of you in the room are, are aware but uh, uh, Mexico produces more engineers than we do in this country and uh, that's a fact which is amazing and so forth uh, so there's always opportunities for us to learn for them to learn so we can all both grow together in what we're doing I think with all our initiatives because there's a lot of great things going on so because of our consulate's office we were able to connect with uh, someone in Mexico who is doing a wonderful job. Uh, it's an organization called the Movimiento STEM, which of course is pretty obvious uh, translation and so forth, but it's a national organization across the entire country. And um, the person that helped found and the CEO of that organization, Graciela Rojas, is with here today, with us today. She made the trip from Mexico City to learn about what we were doing and we could learn about what they were doing. And uh, she's the funder and director, and I had to really figure this out myself too, of uh, Professor Chiflado, which is, <laughs> which is not a, uh, uh, it's a concept, but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, uh, Mexico that she has uh, started, and I know that they have over 3,000 events, and she probably will talk about that during the year, which is incredible, I don't know how they do this, but, um, but in 2014, uh, that concept was awarded the National Entrepreneur Award, and in 2015, they received the National Quality Award. And uh, she has driven scientific thinking for more than 20 years as part of social welfare in San Antonio. 
and uh, 24, I mean, in New Mexico, and in 2014, she was recognized as one of the most outstanding executives in the country by Executive World. In 2015, one of the top 10 entrepreneurs by the magazine Expansion, and in 2017, one of the 100 most powerful women by Forbes. Please welcome Graciela Rojas. present uh, what we are doing in, in Mexico in Movimiento STEM. I don't know what is the Of, of some important data, no? Uh, they do know that, for example, for uh, by 2050, there will be two additional billion people who suffer from hunger in the world, no? And at least one of four people will, li will live in a country affected by chronic storage of uh, fresh water. And half of the world population uh, lives directly with the equivalent of two dollars. <laughs> These are the the, um, the, the uh, part of the, the of the data that comes of the sustainable development goals, and uh, also um, uh, in in the world that we are that the the, 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 the children will 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 um, uh, sorry for my English but <laughs> um, uh, it, it is the for revol the revolution no. Uh, we are talking about Watson, uh, all that, that, that thing of Tesla, uh, the Google uh, in, 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 in making cars, no? and also the, t the 3D uh, production of the world. It is that the 10% of the production of the, the world will be printed in 3D. No? So this is the world that we are now uh, uh, having. Uh, this, uh, the impact of this for revolution uh, will be 5% of the full jobs of the world, uh, 45 uh, activities of, of, the, of, the, um, of, the, of the jobs, uh, and 65 of the jobs for the Zeta generation do not exist. But we must, um, uh, what we must understand is according to the UN, this generation uh, between 9 and 19 years all is the first generation that can um, finish with extreme poverty in the world, but more important is also the last one that, uh, that can uh, end with a climate change. Um, in other words, this is the generation that really can change the world. But what is very worrying in, in a lot of countries and in Mexico also is that the, a lot of the teachers that are responsible in, of this education do not even know the Millennium Goals. Uh, we need to act fast uh, to <coughs> empower them to fulfill their mission, or simply we as a humanity, we will not achieve uh, these goals. No. So uh, what, what we are uh, doing in Mexico, we are trying to, well, this is uh, the model that we are trying to, 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 to improve in Mexico. No? Uh, we are uh, asking the, the teachers that, that they should uh, uh, work with this model, that uh, uh, starting with a problem, um, a real problem, a social problem, uh, and in applying a rigorous, rigorously science and mathematics, uh, working in an inclusive team, not girls versus boys, no, an inclusive team, uh, using the technology and the arts to create the solution, and uh, using this uh, design thinking and engineer process no, to, to create the solution. So with this, uh, the, the students can present like um, an elevator pitch 
of the solutions, no, so it, and a prototype, no, to uh, uh, start uh, making these 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 uh, dreams uh, come true, no. Um, uh, with with this, we are uh, developing the STEM competences that is critical thinking. Problem solution, creativity, communication, collaboration, data literacy, and computing and IT. And according to the World Economic Forum, uh, these are the most relevant competences to the next uh, to the next century. Um, uh, what are we doing? We are uh, like integrating the STEM ecosystem in Mexico. So that's why it is so uh, good that we can be integrating to an, a global uh, a, a STEM uh, initiative uh, like STEM ecosystems. And also uh, we are like uh, uh, making things, um, we are um, trying to, to, to get a, to, to publicate a, 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 a book uh, that, uh, that can show the state of art of the, of the STEM ecosystem in Mexico. It is missing a lot of, of, uh, of uh, um, research, uh, relevant research, to understand the real state of, the, of this ecosystem in Mexico. So we are trying to uh, uh, join a lot of uh, people that are in these ecosystems uh, uh, to know and to have a general, uh, relevant research and create these reports to have a publishing. Uh, and, and this will be like a reference in Latin America. Also, uh, we are uh, like uh, making a lot of efforts for dissemination and, and, and awareness of STEM. Uh, 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 a lot of, of, uh, of parents in Mexico do not know the relevance of this STEM. So we want to, to, to show the, why it is important to, to their children to get a job in this new context of the world. And then uh, we are also um, developing these competences because, uh, as I t uh, told you, this model it is not known uh, in, in all across the country. So we are like certifying uh, professors, uh, so they can uh, know this, this goal, this model, this kind of, of, of the, this way of thinking, so they can develop and teach in this way in the in the in the classes. No, and then. Um, uh, what, what results do we expect? It is, it is the last part, the competitive talent uh, for the 21 century. Uh, in Mexico, we have a lot of people, as you know, so uh, this can affect to 11 uh, million uh, students in all our country. And we have a, a teachers for a, a high school and, 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 and junior high school and senior <coughs> high school. Uh, there are uh, almost one million teachers in this uh, uh, in this sector of the of the um, of the educational uh, system. So it is very very important to uh, for, for us the teachers will be the STEM ambassadors that can convince this new generation uh, to, to solve these uh, world problems that all of us are so, so worried about. Our, our impact, uh, we are uh, trying in, 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 in this year to impact 500 <coughs> teach, uh, 5,000 teachers that can impact in, 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 in 250 uh, teenagers and youngers. And we hope that in, uh, in five years we can go for one million uh, uh, trained uh, new uh, students because we can uh, we have these these teachers very as ambassadors. We are trying to to, to, to say that these children to think big uh, and not to start a, a new like a, a new entrepreneur uh, uh, entrepreneurship um, uh, that um, very very uh, small. We, we want uh, them to think bigger uh, because a solution will transform the lives of billions of people. That is the way that we want that the young uh, people in Mexico think. And we need the teachers as ambassadors to convince them <coughs> and to empower them to do this. So that is what, what we are doing in, in Mexico. 
Uh, our mission is to inspire, inspire the young minds that um, who will change the world. And uh, well, I am the founder, and we have a, a board very, very, very important because uh, uh, it is a, um, the, the director, for example, of, of Google in Mexico, the director of Manpower, Monica Flores in Latin America, also GE, also the, the president of the OGDE. This is our board, and, and we are. We think that we can uh, together push uh, the, the system to 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 we became an, an, an STEM a, a, a system in Mexico. Thank you very much. Gracias, Graciela. Thank you so much. Uh, so we're almost at the end, folks, and basically at this point I'd like to have Reve come back and kind of bring it all together for us as we look at our committees and moving forward. Reve? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do next? What do we need to do? So one of the things we want to do next is to really get your voice. Time, talent, and treasure, you know, we have that at Mass at least once a year, time, talent, treasure. <laughs> Any one of those that makes sense to you to commit to this movement here in San Antonio, we'd love to have you lend that to this group. So um, before I go a little bit further, I want to just recognize the leadership team from Education Service Center Region 20. So Dr. Carolyn Garcia is our deputy um, at the Service Center, and then Janet Poth is our component director. And Rudy said earlier that they, uh, that I don't ever say no to him, it's because they say yes to me that I can say yes to him. So I appreciate your support every single day. True champions of STEM for all kids. So um, last couple of things, and we really love to honor your time. So we know if you have to run, take this page and act on what you see here. There are two pieces on the back of your agenda. And one we're going to do right now in the moment, and the other you can do right now or in the future. So there are two things. As we develop our uh, vision as an ecosystem, we're really figuring out what the landscape is now and what we want to do together as an ecosystem. And so back to that mission-driven piece, how do we drive towards that vision together um, unless we develop it together? And so what we really would love to have is your input. So there are two ways to provide some immediate input right now. Um, one is a poll everywhere. So if you will look at the instructions, you can do it by text. You can do it um, on your device, on your laptop if you like. But we really want to know what kinds of words, ideas, concepts are important to you that we should think about are the mission of this ecosystem. What can drive us toward that mission? So if you will text that. Um, if you'd like to do it on your device, you also have instructions there as well. So as you're doing that, and it's just going to populate as we're talking, and I'll keep refreshing so we can see it. What we really want to see are what concepts rise to the top so that we can really clearly articulate that as an ecosystem. So that's one thing we really need. Um, that's one of your calls to action today. The second call to action is a much longer, and I say much, so 30 seconds right now on Poll Everywhere or five minutes on a Google survey. Please commit both if you can. Um, at the very bottom of this back page of your agenda, there is a link to a survey. And we would love for you to commit your uh, words there. And really, it's getting your input, your insight. If you're part of the STEM Council, you have already done this probably. Um, if you're part of the Education Workforce Committee at the Hispanic Chamber, you probably got the survey, but we'll take your voice again. So um, give us all the data that we can possibly gather to help us build a strong application on behalf of the ecosystem. So those are two calls to action right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and post this so that we can take a look at how, how it's going so far. See the results are capturing right there for you. It's awesome. If I can get back to it. The other thing we want to ask of you as another call to action is um, on the tables, Dr. Reyna introduced chairs from each of the different committees that have agreed to come together and convene. 
So on those tables, if you look at the yellow sheet, so any of the chair folks, if you'll hold that up so folks around the room can see where you are, in just a minute when we kind of dismiss, what we'd love to ask you to do is to find the placard that best represents where you want to contribute in this ecosystem. And there are a lot of opportunities there. On the back of that placard is a place for you to give your contact information so the chairs can continue reaching out to you and convening you, bringing you together to think about what the ecosystem needs to know about that group. So those are two pieces, well three pieces really. So pull everywhere, the Google survey, and then decide which table you would like to go to, offer your contact information, and be a part of those convenings over time. <laughs> All right, he's more technologically savvy than me that I can't get this uh, world up here. All right, I'll put it up while we're convening at the table. Dr. Rainey, did you want to close? Okay. I just went through the website. Yeah, go ahead and come. Well, first of all, thank you everyone for, for being here this morning. I know everyone is busy. I know everyone has uh, a lot on their plates, and yet uh, you took time to be with us this morning for something that's very, very important for our community as we continue to move forward to take all the good work that all of you are doing in your own areas to help make San Antonio the best that it can be. Because I, I love San Antonio. I grew up here and um, the South Side. And I just uh, thank the world of uh, every one of you because I have an opportunity to interact with you. And, uh, thank you for being here this morning and for being a part of this and I really look forward to as we bring our committees together as we move uh, forward with the application to get input from the community so that we're in a position to really have what we would call everyone's uh, thinking about what this, this ecosystem should be about and also work with our partners you know, in Mexico and so forth who are going to be going through the same process so that we can collaborate. So thank you all very much for being here, and we really appreciate you, and we'll look forward to continuing our work with you. Buenos dias.